Hi to all, I hope you're all doing really, really well. So I was browsing some uh, YouTube videos and I stumbled upon uh, the FreeCAD Gristfinity Workbench and I decided to give it a go. Uh, this workbench is really interesting, the creator of it is Stu142, I hope I haven't butchered uh, his name and if you can please uh, go ahead and support him and as I've, uh, I've said uh, I've uh, decided uh, to give it a go but the thing that really impressed uh, me about uh, this uh, session of FreeCAD and by the way right now I'm uh, using FreeCAD 1.1 1 .1, uh, development uh, version was the resilience that it had uh, at geometry changes when working with this uh, Gridfinity beam and I will give you an example of uh, just that so if we select this grid here and we decided uh, to make it uh, just a little bit bigger for example seven rows and it will take just a second to recompute the whole assembly you can actually see how the, ex the assembly hasn't uh, failed uh, yet I can also select this bin here and I can uh, I can decide to make it for example three units on the x-axis and sometimes it needs a recompute and uh, you can uh, you can see how resilient the toponaming algorithm is uh, about uh, changes and this really surprised me of course we can make it fail uh, with some extreme examples for example if we choose this beam and uh, we want it to be just one unit on its x-axis the assembly works but if we change it again to two units it will shift but this is easily fixable in the, the assembly workbench we can double click on our last fixed uh, joint i will delete the edge on the bin and reselect it and just like that we've the fixed our assembly let's do the same thing with the other joint double click on it i will leave along the grid and uh, delete the edge on the beam let's choose the right edge for it to mate and click ok as you can see our assembly is uh, once again how it should be let's hide these two joints and uh, try to change again the properties of our uh, grid let's see if the assembly still holds and i will make it again four units make it recompute and sure enough the topo naming algorithm has worked its, uh, its magic of course you can uh, break this by asking some extreme changes but this version of FreeCAD really impresses me if you like what you see, please consider supporting me at the links in the video description. My videos will always be free, but any support I can get keeps me going with this uh, channel and promoting FreeCAD. So this is by no means a full-on tutorial, but I will quickly show you how you can achieve the same results. So the first thing that you need to do is to go into the Tools, Add-on Manager, search for Gridfinity, select the workbench and uh, click install I've already installed it so close this dialog and restart FreeCAD once the add-on is uh, installed you can access it by clicking the Gridfinity icon here or you can you could also install the Pi menu add-on and set up a Pi menu for uh, switching uh, workbenches this is just a tip as you can see in the uh, Gridfinity add-on we have some tools to create parametric Gridfinity objects I will use the Gridfinity Magnetic uh, Base Plate, the Gridfinity Parts Bin and a Gridfinity Simple Storage Bin. What I want to do is to switch to the Part Design Workbench. I will create three different bodies. One, two, three. I will rename the first one by pressing F2 on your keyboard. I will rename it as Grid. The second one I will rename it as Parts Bin. And the third one I will rename it as basic beam 
you can double click an object to make it active or alternatively you can press the right click button and toggle this checkbox here with the grid body active i will switch to the gridfinity workbench and i will create a gridfinity magnetic base if we take a look at it it will be created with the origin at the first at the center of the first grid unit one thing to note is that the gridfinity add-on creates the objects towards a negative z value if we go into the view menu and we toggle our axis cross the positive z goes up and the object is created going down what i would like to do is to give this grid a different color so i will select it Control d on your keyboard i choose the custom appearance let's change this color i like this blue okay close and close this one too so we have our basic uh, grid now let's activate the parts beam switch again to the gridfinity workbench i will create a gridfinity parts beam again let's change the color of this object select it in the tree view control d on the keyboard custom appearance and i like it, this color here okay close let's close this one too let's hide the first uh, two bodies and now double click on the basic beam switch to the gridfinity workbench and i will create a simple storage beam as you can see it is created inside the active body now that we have created our parts let's hide this one here i will switch to the um, assembly workbench by pressing this icon here i will create a new assembly and i will import the parts that i need i will import the grid and the workbench will ask me if i want to ground uh, the first part that i inserted i will choose yes i will import two basic beams and i will also import two parts beam click ok and the uh, dialog is closed the first thing that i want to do is perhaps uh, hide this uh, lock icon and i will go into joints and i will hide the joint symbol with uh, gridfinity objects it is enough to select even just one edge on the geometry and the property view will offer all the options that we could need for this particular um, grid i will choose to have a 4x4 grid geometry as I've previously said, uh, the gridfinity objects are created in a negative Z direction and I would like to have this assembly above Z0. So I will right click and transform it. Take it up a bit. Now the first thing that I want to do is to place these two parts being on the upper edge of my grid. And because we've de uh, just used the um, transform tool, the assembly is not active anymore. It is enough to double click it. And if I select the parts being on the tree, a manipulator will be shown. The parts can be manip manipulated also by dragging them. Let's start mating some parts. I will choose this edge here. To be mated with this edge here on the bottom of my first beam it is enough to press this icon here for a fixed joint or f on the keyboard the beam was placed in the right position but it is rotated by 90 degrees so press ok there is something strange going on here It was enough to solve the, assemb the assembly. We will do the same thing with the second, par uh, second parts bin. So I will select it. I will rotate it. Let's select the first edge that we need here. I will select the edge that I need under the parts bin. Press F on your keyboard and uh, rotate the object. Press OK. For some reason, this assembly needs resolving. What I would like to do is to have these uh, basic beams here uh, occupy just uh, one unit on the x axis of the grid. So I will select the geometry on one of them and in the property view, I will choose one unit on the x axis, but perhaps this is two and let's choose one on the y axis. I want to make them here. 
F on the keyboard for a fixed constraint press OK let's resolve the assembly and let's do it with this one also F on the keyboard OK now just as a test let's do the cool things where we modify the geometry of the grid and I will perhaps make this 7 units and if I select a geometry here I will make this uh, these uh, parts being extend for 3 grid units how cool is this? I could also import perhaps another parts bin okay let's just move it in here I will select this edge here and this edge here on the parts bin and I, I will create a fixed uh, joint and this is pretty much it you can really easily create and print Gridfinity components using this FreeCAD add-on. I would like to make this one perhaps 3 unit tall. And as you can see everything works as expected. Thank you for staying till the end and I'll see you in the next one.